This is a story of a boy, your firstborn, whom you call Simon Peter, like the first apostle. And you, the father, Robin. You became an architect. And as all architects dream of doing, you built your own house, near the center of Dublin, where we all grew up. We had to let it go in the end, though I suspect you always knew we would. In this house, the dream of the modern world, a modern Irish world, became a reality. Although I didn't know all of that at the time, I was an excited young boy when you took me on the weekends to your building sites. One day, when I was 10, we went out to Maynooth College. I recognised your arts building from far away, even before you pointed it out to me. I knew that it was yours because it seemed to float above the ground, so elegant. I was proud you were my dad. and the restaurant building at University College Dublin. I'll never forget climbing that staircase after you. Or at Wesley College. Many times I went to this gym as a teenager. It seemed like an integral world already so familiar to me at home in this landscape. An intermediate place between inside and outside. Clear, full-height glazing, uninterrupted horizontal space. And your favourite, the science lab at St. Columbus. The ground flows under and around it, it floats above its site, transports itself to a dreamlike place. You only built four houses. This one at Kinsale, an Irish temple, square in plan. My students went a couple of years ago to visit the famous Swiss architect Vecchini. I was amazed to see he had a picture of this house beside his desk. He said it had been there for 40 years. But when I was 16, your edifice cracked for a long time. It was as if you weren't there anymore. You left the practice of architecture and began to write. In all of this, I see that you were very much alone, so immersed in your writings, and you barely seemed to notice the life you had made for us. I've asked myself since, why did this happen? But I can find you in the things that you've left behind. So I want to celebrate your architecture, to protect your buildings, and to share your writing. In your essay, A Sense of Place, you talk about your search for truth and how that relates to place and how it relates to people. Was this the place that you were writing about? Borbui the paradise you built for us on the wild Bera Peninsula. Man's image of place, particularly of home, seems to me instinctual and explicitly sensual. And this image, and his demand to satisfy this image, are normal expectation. If event and place in memory are inseparable, and so action and environment are inseparable. The idea of place is only a rough, practical approximation. There is nothing 
logical necessarily about it, and it cannot be made precise. If place cannot be made precise, perhaps neither can a person.